Well, the office is now a complete mess. It's uh, 4.33, I'm home. Um, it's been uh, not, not a great day. I've probably gotten about nine inches of rain so far. It's windy, it's 35, it's horrible. But a couple things showed up for the car, so that's good. First thing, uh, 2013 high version of the navigation disks, east and west. Uh, I've already put the west disk away for now. I won't need that for a little bit longer. But as you can see, that would include all of the bad states and that stuff up there that nobody really knows about. So I'm going to go throw that in the car. i got to go to the post office. and uh, I sold that aluminum trim around my old navigation display, so I'm shipping that to Oregon. Also ordered a, about a week ago new floor mats. I said last spring that I was going to get these before spring hit, and I was going to put the nice M5 floor mats in. And you know, I, I had some with the car. I don't know how old they are, but they didn't look nearly this nice. I'll pull them out in a little bit, do a side by side. But this is obviously the driver's one. They're they're discombobulating right now. They were kind of folded up a little bit in the box that came from Roswell, Roswell Georgia. So I'm going to let them flatten out, and uh, they are. OEM original floor mats for E39 M5. Came from a dealer. Probably vacuum them a little bit, but it has really nice. This is you know the this is the driver's one. So your pedals are up here. This is where your heel sits. So they put this reinforced spot so it doesn't go through the rest of it over time. And the two back ones are here. And the passenger one is really going to need some flattening out. I'll probably leave it out on the floor for a little bit or put it under the bed or something and let it straighten out and they'll go in in six months when it stops snowing and raining. That's the box that four floor mats came in. As you can see, they would have been folded over a few times. I came in the house and I saw this little white package that I knew right away had these discs because I ordered them like two weeks ago. It was long shipping from, I believe, Santa Clarita, California. Um, I guess they just came in the mail. But the floor mats I ordered from, I said, Georgia and they came in that box. Anyways, I looked at the box and thought, what the hell is that? And it was until I looked at the thing and it said Roswell. Usually when I, when I think of Roswell, it's New Mexico. Well, not this case, so I figured out what they were and now we get to put this in. And, and here's the install process. I'm not gonna make any 39 source video. You know, it, it's probably pretty simple. Come back here, you gotta press that button. And we gotta wait for the thing to wake up and spit out my 2009 DVD that this computer actually came with, the previous seller included. So uh, I'll do that and we'll see if there's any more detail. The, the fact that the whole country was on the 2009 disc plus Canada and then they split it up in probably 2010, 11, or 12, or maybe 13 into two discs, there's like 750,000 restaurants on here just for this half of the country. So I should get more detail and of course updated um, road networks. The, the new streets downtown where the restaurants are, and, you know, the, the downtown area isn't even on the 2009 DVD. Um, and it looks like they changed their style a little bit. That's all of North America. It's 2009.1. This is 2013 version disc one of two. So uh, I'll let you know if I see any any updates. Maybe I'll sell this 2009 disc. It's probably not worth much. I only paid like $30. Got them on eBay. They're, I'm sure they're not genuine BMW parts, but as long as the, the data is there byte for byte, I don't care where they came from, per se, because they'll probably be replaced later if they continue to make the high version of these discs, which is applicable to trunk loading Mark 1 through 4 based systems over the iDrive systems, which would load in the dashboard like an E60. Freaking right, we're almost downtown, as you guys probably recognize, but those are the streets I'm talking about. Uh, right here, this is Route 91, north-south. I have it in perspective view, and streets, street names are off, but... Um, like Clinton Street and First Street, Library Street, all these streets downtown appear to be there now. So I'll cut through there on my way to the post office, which isn't 100% on the way, but I can make that work and we'll make sure that that's all working good like. Beautiful. That's what it is supposed to look like. Before I'd come on here, it would just have me in the middle of the field and tell me to get back on the route as soon as possible. Then I'll give it to Merck. That is gorgeous on the outside. There's the old CLS, which I remember when that first came out, I really liked it. I was the first good-looking Mercedes, in my opinion, that they had made for a long time. And I, we'd see a CLS 550, and we, I remember Ken and I would stop biking and uh, end up taking a picture of it. Now they, they look a little, well, kind of like the, the so I, technically the second generation 6 Series does. It's kind of a quirky design. 
Um, and in some ways, the E60 too, at least the regular 5 Series is just kind of strange. There's a lot of cars that meet that quirky setting though. Uh, you know, when a new idea comes out, like the whole concept of a four-door coupe, everybody tries it. Mercedes did it years before anybody else with their CLS and uh, it was kind of a, you know, the first interpretation of that design. And the way that the X6 is kind of quirky looking, um, it's the first interpretation of that design. And then, you know, years later, manufacturers come back and other manufacturers try to do the same thing with their own twist on style. I don't know why there's a river here, a mud river in the middle of the road. That's that's classy. Welcome to Hudson. Looks like they got a malfeasance over here. Friggin' hell. Dick. Anyways, um, with the X6, you know, I, I read something somewhere that BMW is going to do a big redesign of the X6. Um, in the next year to two, um, so I'm kind of excited for that. And then back to the four-door coupe kind of thing. Uh, Audi came along with the A7, which is beautiful. The back of it's a little weird, a little weird with me, um, but the rec most recent one in terms of the luxury brands would be the six series Grand Coupe, which uh, I really like. Maybe I'm a little biased with that, but it's a beautiful car, especially the M6 variant, which I haven't seen since Detroit, but I'm sure they'll be around, at least here. But it's good to see that, you know, I'm on a car rent. It's good to see, though, that cars that are deemed as everyday cars for people who aren't really enthusiasts are getting to be beautiful cars. The new Ford, is it the Taurus or whatever that is, uh, is a good-looking car. The Fusion is a good-looking car. The Buick, the new Buick, um, I guess, Verano, Regal, and LaCrosse look decent. Um, so no longer do you have to spend a lot of money to get a car that doesn't look like a greasy turd. Oh, the Veloster, that is kind of the uh, the poster child for quirky cars, I suppose. Hey, what the hell does that mean? Look at that walk sign. It's got a picture of a guy walking and a hand up. Which one? Am I missing something? What does that mean? Stop or go? That's like having both the red and green light on, on a traffic light. I'm perplexed. Go figure, completely bamboozled. Don't get it. Most of our snow is disappearing, which is good. It is supposed to get colder and snow flurries, but I don't really anticipate anything accumulating enough to warrant shit tons of snow or salt dumped on the road and or utilizing my snow drawer. So I guess that's good news. It is already the 26th, that's progress. Slow, late. Just filmed a uh, little unboxing and first <clears throat> look at what Nutrient sent me. I actually just realized there's a little pouch on this thing that is uh, taped down, but I probably should have talked about that. <laughs> it looks like it's got information inside. Hold on, there we go. Yeah, matte finish, capacity. We'll do that in the review. But uh, yeah, this is actually pretty cool. A little battery here. It's got the two USB outputs, one for an iPad and, and everything else. Yeah, that makes it really easy. So when it comes time to charge, check it out. Flip, pop, charge. Super portable. It's even got this uh, little micro USB 5 volt 1 amp thing on the side here that's going to take a little bit of doing to get it out of here. There we go. So should you choose not to use the USB ports instead of having to carry a cable around, if your device uses micro USB, it's right there. So that'll be the first Ryan Knows Tech video that's gone up in a while, but uh, I guess that's it's good, it's about time. So I'll edit that, and that should be up within about an hour, and definitely up by the time this vlog is up. All right guys, that's it for today. Um, just spent the last hour or two on the phone with Colt and Bobby. Um, basic stuff, YouTube videos, Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> all the good stuff, so. Um, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, Wednesday. Probably gonna rain all day again. We'll see. All right, talk to you in 808, good night.